Peace to play. Welcome everyone. My name is Meena Natarajan and I am a co-artistic director and the executive director of Pangea World Theatre. Hello, welcome. My name is Dipankar Mukherjee and I am a co-artistic director and ensemble member of Pangea World Theatre. Welcome. On behalf of art to action and Pangea World Theatre, we invite you to our National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creations first ever online in gathering. We always begin with a ritual. I think beginning by itself is a ritual. If you were all here in one room in Minneapolis, like the past few years, we all would be sitting in a circle. We all would be eagerly waiting the beginning. And right in the center will be a lamp. So just close your eyes and imagine that we all are sitting in this huge circle in various cities. We begin always with what we call two minutes. It's a ritual that we have arrived at in Pangaea. It has been created by the ensemble. What we do is we sit in a circle and then I ring a bell. Anybody in the circle can ring a bell. We have this bowl and we ring the bowl. And then for two minutes, we just breathe together. And we arrive at a collective breath. This is a personal time. And then after, Two minutes, nobody's going to keep time. It's just a sense of silence and being together. After two minutes, I ring the bell again, and then we begin our journey. That's the two minutes that we'll begin our journey with right now. Welcome, welcome to this circle, a square circle, however, but it is a circle and we are connected with each other. And now I would like to invite my teacher, my mentor, my guide, my artistic colleague, my thought partner, Sharon Day, to begin the next few days of our journey. Sharon is a healer, a Medouin, 
a respected indigenous elder in this community and in this country. Sharon is a friend. Sharon is kind, fierce, a visionary, and a mind-blowing artist. She is one of the most open, compassionate, fierce friend that I have got who does not allow me or this world to play small and to maintain status quo. I have the distinct honor of being her men mentee and to it's a privilege to call Sharon my mentor. And I have the honor to work with her as a colleague, as an artist. And we are privileged to have Sharon Day as our board of director. Sharon, thank you so much. Thank you for being here. It is a deep, deep honor to begin this journey with you, Sharon Day. Yeah. Uh, thank you uh, so much, Dipanka. That was um, very kind. And um, I'm honored to be here today. Buju Nanindawe Magani Dug Nagamo Mayingan and Dishnakaz Wabishay Shin Dodem Ojibwe Kwayendao Dishni Jean Madeo Made Wana Kwayendao. Um, I want to uh, thank uh, DePonker and Andrea for inviting me. And, um, you know, I think uh, where I am right now is in uh, Center City, Minnesota. And uh, the sun is going down, and so you can see it a little bit um, coming through the window. I, I think that uh, any place you are on um, within the United States, within Canada, Central and South America, um, please know that you are on indigenous land. And um, I think that it's so important that whenever we begin something and we are on indigenous land, it's so important that some of the language, indigenous language um, be spoken. Um, and uh, so I'm grateful to be here tonight. Uh, I also just want to give a, um, a little bit of a reflection on on um, what's uh, transpired since the last time we were together back in um, uh, uh, and I guess it was um, 2018, right? And um, we were gathered, I remember at one point at uh, Frog, Frogtown Farm and um, we were on the land and we had some time just to, to walk, to connect with the land and um, to, to be silent. And um, since that time, you know, we've, we've experienced um, a lot of despair, frustration, um, hopelessness, and also a deep, deep uh, anger. And some of us are not new to this. Um, indigenous people, people of color, um, you know, we've been dealing with many of these issues um, that have occurred this past year with COVID and um, also um, the George Floyd uprising here in Minneapolis, but we've survived. And um, not all of us, you know, some of us um, uh, um, did not survive, but those of us that did, we're still here. And we're here because of um, the values um, people of color and indigenous people hold. Um, you know, and I look at my window, I see the garden and, um, you know, we, when we plant a garden, we plant those first seeds for the children and the next seeds um, of the, of the um, produce that we're planting is for the elders. So we try to take care of um, those who are most vulnerable. And, uh, you know, um, I, in January, I was in uh, New York City performing with Spider Woman Theater when that first case of COVID uh, came. And um, by April, we lost two of the ensemble members, um, Kevin Tarrant and uh, Tyrell, who was one of the actors in the piece that I was working on. And, um, and we've lost many people since then. But we've also been, um, and, and as, as theater artists, you know, um, we've lost uh, um, performances, jobs, income, 
and yet uh, we're we're still here. And um, and we've been innovative. We found ways to do our work to make our voices heard. And um, and and we continue. I mean, the fact that we're gathering here, um, people from all over the country are gathering here today um, through this technology. You know, speaks to the innovation. I want to thank uh, DePonker and Andrea for being able to bring us together in this time. And um, and uh, so you know, we're going to continue to do our work. And I remember back in 2012 when we first gathered and. And we all talked about um, our values, what we're bringing to um, to our gathering together, to the circle. It was a huge circle, and um, and we talked about uh, those values, and those values are what are, is going to keep us moving forward. And um, um, I think I will just end with some words from a song I was listening to today. Um, it was Alicia Keys and. Um, and um, Brandy Carlisle, and the words are, I have a voice, started out as a whisper, turned into a scream, made a beautiful noise, shoulder to shoulder, marching in the street, when you're alone, it's a quiet breeze, but when you band together, it's a choir of thunder and rain, now we have a choice, because I have a voice. And I think, um, you know, we have voices. We, um, you know, we, uh, you know, for those of us who lived through HIV, um, it was people in our community who were the first ones um, devastated. And, um, you know, there's so many people, you know, that I still miss from um, that epidemic. And so, you know, we must um, take care of each other, support each other more now than ever and um, support our work because we are the ones who are going to make this shift. In Minneapolis, you know, it was our youth who were in the street. 200 buildings were burnt down. It was our youth who were in the street um, saying, demanding change. And, you know, we're at the brink of that. Um, well, you know, we, we need to get over the top and get to that, but um, we need to support our youth and um, so that we can make those kinds of changes we need. And as artists, that's our job to push, to make our voices heard and to make the kind of changes so that um, there will be artists uh, seven generations from now um, telling their stories, singing their songs. Um, so I want to say um, thank you for inviting me. And also, um, I want you to welcome Andrea Asaf, one of the masterminds of this. So um, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sharon, for those beautiful words and reminders and grounding. Um, it's always a pleasure to see you and we're always honored to have you with us. Thank you, Sharon Day. And just a plug, you'll see Sharon again later this evening in the next session, if you stay with us for the equity conversation, which we hope you will. Thanks, Sharon. So uh, I am Andrea Asaf. I'm the Artistic Director of Art to Action. And I'm uh, calling in today from Tampa, Florida, which is Seminole land. Tampa is actually a Seminole word. And we invite you, I know in the chat, if you're following in the chat, uh, there's a link. If you um, don't know the first, nations and first peoples of the land that you're on, we invite you to do some research and look it up using that link, um, nativeland.ca. And to put in the chat a, a hello, a welcome, a greeting, and uh, let us know where you're uh, watching from and whose land uh, you are standing on right now. Um, so I have the uh, honor to tell you a little bit about the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation. Um, some of you have been on this journey with us for many, many years. Some of you joined us for the first time last year or have been watching from afar as this program has grown. And some of you are just learning about it perhaps 
if you're tuning in tonight on HowlRound. Shout out to HowlRound. Thank you so much for live streaming with us throughout the weekend. Um, so here we are in 2020 in virtual space. And it's the first time actually that we have the opportunity to share out with the rest of the theater field and our wider communities, what we've been doing at the National Institute for Directing and Ensemble Creation all this time. Uh, it's a, been an incredible uh, multi-year, uh, going on multi-decade uh, partnership between Pangea World Theater and Art to Action. And I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the history. We started this work because um, we felt that there was a lack of uh, opportunities for peer exchange, mentorship, and training for uh, particularly artists of color, directors of color, women directors, LGBTQ identified and two-spirit artists. And we wanted to create a space that would center um, the artists who are practicing in all of these traditions and cultures and lineages to come together and actually share our practices. So the first thing that we had to do was do some field research, um, which we did from 2010 to 2012. And uh, some of you might have seen us popping up at uh, convenings at the National Performance Network, NPN, or uh, the Association of Performing Arts Presenters or various convenings around the country, certainly the Consortium of Asian American Theaters and Artists, Kata, where we gathered uh, Asian American directors. And we did a lot of uh, questioning and digging. We went to see other institutes. We visited Urban Busherman's Summer Leadership Institute. We visited La Mama's Directing uh, Institute in Umbria in Italy. And uh, to learn about the, what was out there, uh, also Lincoln Center and other directing programs, and what was unique about this space that we could create as artists of color, women directors, and LGBTQ ensemble leaders, and two-spirit folks. Um, so in 2012, we were able to do our first pilot institute to gather uh, colleagues and um, elders and folks we wanted to learn from and with and explore this idea and do some curriculum development. And we have a clip uh, from a video that we made in 2012 that we'd love to share with you so you can um, hear some other artists talking about their experience about why it is important for artists of color, women and queer directors to come together in this way. Um, so uh, we're gonna share that uh, video from 2012 with you. And um, perhaps we'll also share in the chat the link to the full uh, longer documentary. Here we go. We can go ahead and play the video. There are very few opportunities for people of color to be able to grow in a specific art of directing um, as a very challenging uh, role. And having an institute to be able to provide the structure, the opportunity to exchange ideas with other directors and learn from each other really will push the envelope of what is ensemble directing. The impact will be there's a kid that I don't know who's 12, 13 years old, who I know 10 years from now, if they've decided to become an artist, will be impacted by this. And that's a beautiful thing to know. I know it. All our training has been the legacy of three basic things. One, genocide against the Native Americans. Two, slavery, slavery about uh, the African Americans. And three, colonization, which is the history of most of the immigrants on this, in this um, country, in North America. So once you're in the context of these three, that's the legacy with which all these structures that exist now have been created. And so for us to come over here, and dream of an alternate. There is no role model for us to follow. We are crafting the dream as we speak with elders in the room, with intergenerational participation in the room, and with one uh, sort of stewardship that we will all take accountability to shift conversation for the future generation. So the surprise was a constant, constant participation that we can do it. We, people of color and women, can do it. We are no longer going to wait for the mango to ripen in India. There's an analogy they say that, you know, if you keep waiting under a mango tree for that particular mango to ripen and fall into your lap, 
you will keep holding an empty basket all your life. So instead of waiting for that particular mango to, to ripen, we decided to start tilling the field and plant um, orchards of mango trees. There's a teaching in our that's come to me um, that talks about the sacred tree that stands at the center of the medicine wheel. And I can talk about that the rest of the week because this, what we've just discussed and what we're, our intention is, is what that metaphor is for me. Is that every point on that circle, every person has a perspective that's different than the next one. That we see the sacred tree at the center of the circle differently because we're sitting in a different position around. You can't describe that tree in the middle without having every perspective around so every point is valid every every perspective is is needed to describe the sacred tree that stands at the center of the medicine wheel thank you so much for um playing that video i hope that you enjoyed hearing some of those voices um, some of whom you'll hear more of throughout this weekend. Um, so from 2012, we learned so much and we continued our journey. In uh, 2015, we were able to uh, do a specific uh, gathering for Indigenous artists. And the reason is because we realized after doing studying the field, as Dipunker mentioned, that um, there, there was no network for theater artists who are Native American or Indigenous or First Nations peoples who are creating contemporary work. And uh, unlike, um, you know, the National Association for Latino Arts and Culture or the multiple um, networks that we have for Black and African American directors or Kata for Asian American theater, um, there, there was no infrastructure for Native American artists to gather in the theater field. And so we um, decided that it was important to um, put some of the funding that we had to support this work toward that gathering. Um, so in 2015, we had an indigenous artist gathering, we had another peer exchange, and we continued peer exchanges in 2017, and then opened our first Next Generation Institute for um, artists who were emerging or not already established in the field. And we had a faculty structure similar to other institutes. And in that experience, we discovered that what people really were expressing a hunger for was mentorship, both the next gen artists and um, the, the elders and mentors and leaders in our field um, wanted that intergenerational exchange and an opportunity to learn about mentorship and create mentorship relationships. So later in this weekend on Sunday, we'll have a whole panel conversation just about that process. In 2018, we shifted to a mentorship model. And in 2019, we continued that mentorship model. So we're gonna play you another video, just a quick two minutes a sneak peek into what that experience was like in 2019 and how the Institute has been growing over these years. So we'll see the next video. Thank you. It looks like we might be having a little technical difficulty with uh, getting it to play. So I'll tell you a little bit more and then we'll come back to that video in just a second. Um, so we'll see a, a clip of our 2019 um, mentorship model. And I just wanna say that, um, you know, it is wonderful to see the field shifting in a way that um, centers BIPOC, meaning black indigenous, and people of color artists and um, lifting up uh, queer and trans folks in, uh, in, in all the multiple ways that we are such a diverse community, both as theater makers and as a nation or um, a colonial uh, construct of a nation, at least in the United States, as we call it. Um, but the thing is we have always centered 
uh, BIPOC artists. We have always centered women leadership and LGBTQ and two-spirit leadership. And um, and we want to say that that journey continues and we hope you will, you will continue it with us. I think we're ready for the video now. Let's see it. Our task as directors is to dig in from our own perspectives. So many different people from so many different places come together like this. And um, I believe that this is fundamental to our growth as an American theater consciousness. Connections that we've made here today, I think will impact me for the rest of my life. It's deepening my practice in ways that I didn't know that I needed. It's affirming things in myself that I didn't know I needed to be affirmed. <laughs> to keep uh, opening up the doors and windows in one's craft. Just the humanity in the room is going to change my bravery. There was a moment where I looked around the circle and I felt like I loved every single person in the circle and was learning from every single person in the circle. And that coupled with the fact that we are also different and we're from different cultures, different theater practices, different parts of the world, um, felt very, very, very special to me. So that was a little taste of where we were last year in uh, in July in Minneapolis, and we look forward to being able to gather in person again. And in the meantime, we're so happy that you've joined us on this virtual journey uh, for today and we hope for the weekend. Um, I just wanna lift up that today is Trans Day of Remembrance. And I would love for all of you to take a moment to um, honor and remember and lift up trans folks and two-spirit folks in your lives. And if you wish to say their names um, in the chat and, um, and remember um, that uh, we are so grateful for trans activists, trans leaders, trans artists in our, in our world. And with that, I'd like to invite Mina to join us again uh, to talk about some other folks that we'd like to honor. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, we also want to honor those uh, who've been an integral part of our institute and who've joined the ancestors at this time. One of them is Laurie Carlos, and many of you know her. Laurie was a dear, dear, dear friend. She was a respected colleague and a visionary artist in the Twin Cities and beyond. Many of you have experienced her fierce energy and her uncompromising spirit. Laurie was part of, a tw of the 2012 pilot Institute. And another person we would like to remember as part of this journey that we're about to embark on is to honor and remember Diane Rodriguez, who was part of the 2019 Institute. Diane was part of the Center Theater Group for many, many years and was a prolific director, a former, and an actor. And she opened the doors for many, many, many people of color and theater makers of color. At the Institute, she told me once how much she enjoyed being there, how much she enjoyed building the solidarity with each other and how much she enjoyed the pluralistic nature of our Institute. We're going to share a couple of photos from the Institutes with you. I, and I invite you to join me for a moment of silence as we watch these beautiful photographs and remember these two brilliant human beings and artists.
Thank you, Mina, for that beautiful moment um, to send love and remember and honor Diane Rodriguez and Lori Carlos. I also would like to take a moment to lift up William Yellowrobe, who is currently um, in the hospital. Uh, and William Yellowrobe joined us in 2015 at the Indigenous Artists Gathering and was such an important, powerful voice and mentor to so many as he has always been. And we just wanted to take a moment to honor William Yellowrobe as well and say that we send our love and blessings to him. And we hope that all of us in the theater field will send love and support um, and honoring to William Yellowrobe uh, in, hope, uh, in hopes of a uh, strong and swift recovery. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, Thank you for that. And um, yeah, let's remember these people who are such an integral part of our institute. Um, so just want to give you a little bit of context of where the institute took place. All, the, all of the institute gatherings so far have been held in Minneapolis, which has been an epicenter of what began a nationwide movement for equity and justice right now. George Floyd was murdered here in late May, followed by an uprising. Many of you who have been at the Institute have experienced what it means to be on Lake Street, where Pangea is located, where many of our venues are located. And our welcome dinner has always taken place at a restaurant called Gandhi Mahal, which is immigrant owned, which has been, which is burned to the ground right now as a result of the uprising. So many of the businesses on Lake Street in and around, in and around Pangea have been boarded up and we are deeply involved at Pangea in an effort to rebuild our neighborhood and our streets and bring art and culture and theater to the communities affected in a socially distant kind of way. Because of uh, what we experienced, uh, we find where we find ourselves now um, in all our cities, in all our countries, because the relevance of time, the relevance of politics. It was so emotional to see our elders whom you shared, uh, mm -hmm. Diane, Laurie, and um, uh, cannot uh, just, just fill my soul. And um, I miss them so much. So the relevance is so important. The politics of location is pivotal. So where we find ourselves now at this moment, the fact that we could not meet in person in 2020. Yes, we are moving to online and that's what um, we are doing right now. But I miss, I miss everyone. I miss you all. I miss our teachers. I miss our elders. I miss that circle. I miss the mentees where vibrant energy, discussion, conversation um, happened for years. And now we move to online for the first time. Enables us to share our work with the national arts field. This year's National Institute offerings mirrors our in-person institute to the best that we can. Of course, we see ourselves in this square, <laughs> in these squares on our screen. But you know each other. You know how full of energy and excitement each of these bodies are and you have seen them work and so uh, i just i just feel even though we are in this one dimensional square uh, but in my head in my i imagine the three dimensional energy that you all are so we have panels we have movement workshops we have master classes something that we will continue to offer throughout 2021 so please watch out to the, for them. We are so thrilled. We are so grateful. We have missed you. And our, I almost feel that our family is getting together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You can always watch all this, that all the online work that is going to go on in, you know, in the Howl Around website. And now, friends, I would like to invite Suzanne Victoria Cross, who's our bedrock behind the scene and an incredible artist. 
and an amazing organizer. Give your energy to Suzanne Victoria Cross. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tifunker. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I think I've been your local coordinator when we were here in person in Minneapolis. And I'm so excited to be your coordinator and work with this amazing tech team throughout um, this week or this weekend. Um, but we, you'll actually see me in just a little bit. I'm going to pop back on and kind of help close this out. But right now, I'd also like to invite Andrea to come back on because there's a little more um, programming to phrase, but you'll see my face in just a moment. Hi, Suzanne. Hello. I'm so happy to see you and be in this space with you. Yeah. Um, I just wanna give it up and take a moment to thank not only Suzanne, but everybody else behind the scenes, Kayla um, and Tanya, who you all will meet later, and the entire Pangea staff um for all the amazing work to bring us together uh for this virtual weekend thank you so much suzanne we'll see you soon um so now we have a very very special treat for you one of the things that this um challenging pandemic time has uh allowed us and brought us to do in in virtual space and as we figure out how to um, gather and reach and share with each other um, without being able to physically be together. Um, we also, it has also brought us to looking at some of our archival material, which we will be increasingly sharing with you um, through the end of the year and into 2021. We have um, so many videos of so many wonderful artists and we have a special treat for you tonight, which is, I am so excited. Um, back in 2015 at the Indigenous Artists Gathering, Joy Harjo was one of the participants who came. And as you may know, Joy Harjo is a poet, a theater artist, a musician, a saxophone player, uh, and an artist extraordinaire uh, who works in so many genres and has touched so many, the lives of so many uh, artists and influenced so many, and is currently our poet laureate of the United States. And not only that, the first, Native American Poet Laureate. And we found this uh, four minute interview with, uh, with um, Joy Harjo talking about her experience in 2015 and just dropping some wisdom as she always does. And so we're gonna share with you this very, very special moment from our archive as a way of honoring uh, Joy Harjo, Poet Laureate and uh, theater artist, enjoy. But what attracted me, first of all, was well, several things, But because I have a deadline, and it kind of came up, and I thought, you know, I needed the food, the spiritual food from it. A lot of us writers, storytellers, songwriters, we work alone. We don't really, we work alone. We, we just take care of what comes to us. And, and but if that's a, a job that's often alone, there's, you get, you face a lot of doubts. You, you know, struggles, you deal with your ancestral struggles, you know, all of that and what needs to come through and sometimes you have to remove those blocks. And um, so to see a gathering of indigenous theater people who are, were story gatherers and story makers. Um, that, yeah, I need this. Yeah, it comes in the middle of all this and getting ready for so many things, but I needed to be here in this circle to, I knew that I would find what I needed. And I have. I, I was the last person to get into theater, although I always loved, I always wound up on the stage, even as a kid, and I was really shy. And even I was, somebody said recently, I was the shyest kid at Indian school, and that's pretty dang shy. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> But there's always something larger than me that would push me forward, you know, even with the music. And I've, the stage has been one of my biggest teachers. It's taught me that I just have to let, I was put here for a purpose, and I just have to let it come through. So I've been writing, you know, I have been doing the writing theater. I haven't been doing it necessarily actively, but I guess with the music, doing the music, the poetry first and the music, but then the music was a lot long before I wrote poetry. And, um, but, the, you know, theater is, 
it's it's really what I see theater is emerging of. I mean, even our ceremonies and our dances, that's theater in a way. Because there what you have is emerging of storytelling, usually with dance and music. They all, you know, words, poetry, they all came into the world together. They like to be together. I think it's great there's poetry in books, but it always wants to climb out and be spoken and be around in a group. So to have this, I don't think there's been a gathering like this, at least I haven't heard of it. And I was in one of the first all Indian drama and dance troops way back at Indian school in the late sixties. And, um, and for me, it was so transformative as somebody who had been very broken as so many of us are, you know, it's historical trauma that gets carried forward unless it's faced to take care of. People do what they can do. And, but to be in that kind of space really puts you in the space. It does put you in an ancestral space. And so I think it belongs with our people. I think um, we, I think we need more of that kind of expression with our young people even the older people, our, our circles have become the, the computer screen. But there's no touching, there's no, you know, yeah, there's a sense, it's really cool. I love Facebook and I love being able to punch in and deal with, you know, my friend from India, you know, so there's these large circles. But it's like that, but to sustain yourself, we really need touch. We need to hear, there's something about the power, voice and the vibration of the voice and the stories. You know, what stories are forming, whatever stories we tell now have everything to do with how the generations, how they follow. That was a wonderful uh, Treat. I hope you all enjoyed hearing some of that reflection and wisdom from Joy Harjo. Um, and I think Mina and DePunker are joining us uh, again. We hope you will join us throughout the entire weekend um, as you are able. We have movement sessions coming up, a masterclass with Sharon Bridgeforth, an incredible panel, incredible panel this evening on, um, on uh, equity and our journey. Uh, understanding um, what equity looks like and what it means and how we learn together at the Institute, as well as conversations on mentorship and a Saturday night open mic showcasing artists who have been a part of the Institute from 2012 to 2019. So we really hope you will join us for all of these uh, events. And I know that Mina and Dipankar are um, joining us again to give a final statement for this session um, in just a moment. And uh, I'd also like to invite um, Suzanne to come back on, as well as Mina and Dipankar. Uh, it is so nice to see you all and to be with you all again. And I will see everyone at the next sessions. Good night. Thank you so much, Andrea. It's so wonderful to um, uh, really do this again together in spite of not being in the same room together. And also just we have just an absolutely incredible team and we'll bring them back at the end of our session on Sunday and introduce you to all of them. Uh, but just really want to say a thank you to Suzanne because Suzanne has been really uh, a, a bedrock for us and taken on so much and made this happened really smoothly, along with Tanya, who is part of Art to Action. So thank you, Suzanne, and take it away. Yes, yeah, Suzanne, I, I have always told Suzanne, uh, I have had the fortune of working with Suzanne through various, various productions, and now this online is its own different life. Uh, <laughs> I always tell Suzanne she has to write a book on grace, <laughs> under tremendous tension, under tre tremendous mess ups, you know, Suzanne comes with a smile and just continues the journey. So I want to honor Tanya, Suzanne, Kayla, and all the people who even some of us, um, people whom I'm not naming, but I know how hard everybody has worked. So um, so thank you. I, I, I really, we bow to you uh, mm -hmm. because we are able to do things because there's a lo lot of you who are holding it together. So here's Suzanne Victoria Cross. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Mina DePunker. I deeply, deeply appreciate that. And thank you, Andrea, um, for earlier. And again, we just have the most amazing team, which and you've all seen, we've come here in person, just we have an incredible, incredible team with us, um, which is why all of this is possible. Um, so yeah, hi, hey everyone. Um, I'm Suzanne again, I'm the kind of holding a space throughout the weekend and I'm very excited to be with all of you and thank you for joining the welcome session. But there is more today, not just ending today. Uh, we have another amazing session that'll be starting. Um, Andrea had mentioned the equity and ensemble and collaboration um, panel will be up and we can start perfect Kayla playing some slides here. That is our next session um, because we are, again, this National Institute, we're working on a lot of different time zones. So this, this next session will be at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern. We will see you there. We're very excited to see you. Um, and then also I got a few other housekeeping tips to go through, which you all know me, I love some housekeeping. Um, we're gonna thank our funders and our partners. Thank you all so much. If you are our partners in making all of this happen, I'm gonna kind of put my screen out here so you can see that a little bigger there. Perfect. Uh, we would not be able to make this work um, happen and come to fruition without our incredible partners. Um, so thank you so much. And the last thing I have to say before we go out, yes, thank you, funders, is that we have two birthdays that we are celebrating this year. Pangea World Theater is turning 25 years old, yes. And Art to Action is celebrating 10 years. The amazing, happy birthday. And so for that, we would love to invite you um, to resource this incredible work. Um, both of the website's links are up there, pangeoworldtheater.org and www.arttoaction.org slash donate. Um, also, please go to those websites to um, learn more and what's next for these incredible organizations that are providing this amazing weekend. Uh, thank you so much. I think that is what I have, and I'm so excited to see you all at the next panel. Thank you.